Okay, so here we are. For this video, I'm going to be making a custom counter. So let's just get right into it. Let's say you work for a company. The boss comes up to you and says, I, I need a 2-bit counter. I want this counter to be an up-down counter. So I want to be able to count up and I want to be able to count down. And you think to yourself, well, I've done this before. I've done a 3-bit up-down counter. I can surely do a 2-bit. But then the boss says, when you're counting up, I want to be given two options. I want to either cycle through the numbers. So if it's a 2-bit, it's going to go from 0 to 3. And then it'll cycle across. If And the other option that I want is I want it to stop at 3. So when it's counting up, so 0, 1, 2, 3, I want it to stop at 3. When we're counting down, on, on the other hand, I want, again, two options. I want to have the option of cycling through the counts. So if we're counting down, it's going to be 3 to 0, you know, and it's going to be cycling through. And the other option for the counting down is I want it to stop at 0. So it's going to start at 3, 2, 1, 0, and it's going to stop at 0. It's going to stay like that. So those are the, the, the two requirements that um, the boss is asking for. With the design process, let's write out some of the um, specifications. We know that it's a 2-bit counter, and we know that it's an up-down counter. So I'm going to write here, up-down counter. So let's, but there's additional requirements here. So let's go ahead and draw like a diagram. So the counter can do two things. It can count up or it can count down. And how do we choose between the two? Well, we have to introduce a new variable, call it x. And let's say we want to count up so then we say okay let x equal to 0 and let's say we want to count down okay let x equal to 1 but there's additional requirements for this counter in the up in the uh, when the counter counts up we want to choose between cycling through so it's going to cycle through from 0 to 3 0 to 3 so on and so forth cycle and then on the right we're gonna make it stop at 3 so it's gonna wherever it is it's gonna count up to 3 and it's gonna stop right there so stops at 3 and then when we're counting down we want similar options so let me when we're counting down we can cycle through the counter as well or the other option can be or it has to be stop at zero now we see that we have four different options now how do we have an input system where we can choose from four different options well, what you do is you, you introduce a secondary variable. So you'll have two variables. So rather than just x, it's going to be x, y. And this is going to be what will allow you to control which of these tasks is performed. Because if you uh, count in two bits, that's a total of counting from 0 to 3. So that's four options. So let's say. So now we just have to assign some variables here, or some numbers rather. So for cycling, x is 0, of course. And let's say y is 0 as well for cycling. If we want to stop at 3, if we want to count up, but stop at 3, let's say x is 0, but 
y is 1. Just like that. If we want to count down and cycle, let's say x is 1, it says it right here, but y, let's let that equal to 0. Like that. And if finally we want to count down but we want to stop at 0, we say, okay, so we count down, so that's x1, but we want to stop at 0, so let's let y equal to 1 here. So now you'll notice that here we've used all of our different options for counting in uh, with 2 bits. So we have here 0, 1, 2, 3. So now we can move on to the state table. So what, that's, what is that going to look like? It's going to look something like this. So we're only counting in 2 bits. So we say A here. Excuse me, we should start with B and then A. And then we draw a line here. And so what we have here is B next state and A next state. So now we just have to draw, we have to write out all of the possible options for the input as well as the possible options for the, the current state. So I'm just going to draw those out. Okay, so I finished um, writing my current state section of the table, but now we have to fill out the, uh, the next state table. So and we have to be very careful about how we fill this out. So let's begin here. When x is 0 and y is 0, we want to cycle through the, the the counter. So we see that we have to make use of this section here. So let's write it out. We want to we want to count up here. So my present state for the counter for um, a b here, this section here it's 0, 0. So next state, I want the next state to be 0, 1. So the present state then becomes 0, 1 and I want the next state from that to be 1, 0. So present state 1, 0, next state 1, 1. Present state 1, 1, next state 0, 0. I want to cycle through the counter. So that means that when the counter starts counting, it's going to be cycling through this over and over again. So it's going to go from 0 to 3, 0 to 3. So that works. And we move on. So now, for this second option here, we want to stop the counter at 3. So how do we do this? We're counting up, but we're going to stop at 3. So if you look at the current state, so I should circle this with green here. If we look at the first section here, we have 0, 0. Next state is going to be 0, 1. Current state 0, 1. Next state 1, 0. Current state 1, 0. Next state 1, 1. Current state 1, 1. If I want the counter to cycle or to stop at 3, I can just say, okay, current state is 1, 1, right here. Let next state equal to 1, 1. So what that'll do is it'll sort of lock these two together. And it's going to be cycling in, in between the current state and next state where it's 1, 1. So it's going to go back and forth, so it's essentially locked in that position. So effectively, you're stopping the counter at 3. And that's what it looks like. So I suppose what I should do is I should separate these like that. Just to avoid some confusion here. Now let's move on. So now we're counting. We have x equal to 1 right here. We're going to be counting down. 
so it's easier if we start at uh, 3 which is the high number so let me go ahead and draw the section for counting down this is the section we will we'll use for counting down and cycling through see and here's the interesting part is these numbers are gonna match this number here for the counter but what does the counter look like though with the next states so let's start at the bottom so we have 1-1 one, one. the next state is going to be 1-0 because I want to count down current state 1-0 next state 0-1 okay current state 0-1 next state 0-0 current state 0-0 next state 1-1 one, one. Let me rewrite these. So this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a one. Yeah, so when we're in this scenario, we want to cycle through the numbers, so we want to count down and then cycle and repeat. So that's what that's what the, this set of numbers will achieve. And when I say numbers, it's uh whether it's binary, decimal, hexadecimal, it's it's all the same for me. It's just how you read it. Okay, so let's circle this one because we're done with this one now. Let's move on. And finally, we're in the last step here. So, 1-1. One, one. So what that does is it's going to count down, but it's going to stop at 0 when it reaches that point. So let's go ahead and count down starting at 1-1. One, one. So we're going to start here. If my present state is 1-1 one, one for the counter, my next state, I want it to be 1-0. So it's actually very similar to this one. So then we have present state 1, 0. Next state is going to be 0, 1. Because we're counting down. Present state 0, 1. Next state is 1, 0. No, excuse me. Present state 0, 1. Next state is 0, 0. Yeah. However, when I reach this present state here, at zero zero I want to keep that uh, zero there so I'm gonna say let the next state equal to zero zero as well so zero zero here and let's circle it so what what you end up with is once this counter reaches this point here it gets locked in the zero zeros and so it switches back and forth between the zero zeros so it appears as if it stopped at zero so the important thing to note to note about this is that if at any given moment these numbers change here it's gonna get out of the loop and it's gonna perform a different task depending on whatever x y values were have been inputted okay so before we continue with our k maps one thing I'd like to mention here is um, how we represent these state tables so on the right you're gonna see a different state table actually these two tables convey the same information if you notice in the table on our left here we see that this set of numbers they repeat so why do we have to write these set of numbers when they repeat so it becomes a little bit redundant to copy them over and over again we know they're the same so that's what this table achieves it doesn't copy over the A's and the B's and this is a typical format that you'll see um, logic design textbooks use this is this is a, a simplified version of a state table so you'll see when for instance when 
let's look at this one here when x y equals to zero zero we're practically taking this box in and bringing it into here when x y equals to zero one and then we look at this one here and then we look at this box here and we put it here so on and so forth you know um, one zero we're looking at this one here and then we're taking this box and putting it into here and that's just pretty much how these the tables work alright so now we can begin to fill out the K map we're gonna start with um, a next state right here so we say that the top here is x y and then we say that this bottom here is a b okay and then it is actually convenient to look at the state table that like um like the state table on the right we have here let me circle it this one it's convenient to look at this state table when filling out the k map because we only have to look at the leftmost column of each of these bits or of this state table here so let's start filling it out just based on that column so when a b is zero zero it's a zero we put nothing when a b is zero one we put a one and then we have to be careful though because these a b's count down in numerical order so from zero to three but when we have the k map here it doesn't count down in numerical order it goes from zero to one and then three and then two so we have to be careful when we fill it out so we see that the three has a zero so we ignore it and then we move on to this one here it's the one zero so we're looking here and we see that it has a one so we fill it out and then we do the same thing for the rest of the, the k map so I'm just gonna do it here So the same thing when we're looking at the the x and the y's actually. We want to be careful with this one here. So we see that the one one has a one in it, so we fill that out with just this one. And we should be good. And then when x is one zero here corresponds to this column. So let's go ahead and fill that out. So that's gonna be zero zero is a one, and then one one is a one. And that completes the K map. And copy another K map here. Let's erase this. Let's get rid of these squares that we did. So once again, we're going to be doing B next day this time. So it's only 2K maps for this design. And we're only looking at this set of numbers. So let's look at the case when XY equal to 0, 0. So we have one here and then we have a 1 at 1 0 so let's look at the case when x y is 0 1 which is the one that follows we have a 1 at 0 0 we have a 1 at 1 0 and then we have a 1 at 1 1 which is right there let's continue look at the case 
when x y is 1 0 so we're looking at this case now so that means we have to look at this column now so we look at 0 0 it has a 1 1 0 it has a 1 so 1 0 is going to be this one right because we look here and move on to the 1 1 column now so we see that the 1 1 column for the x y we have to fill put a 1 wherever a b is 1 0 so it's going to be like this and that completes the k map okay so now we can make our jk equations let's start let's start with ja um, so we have to look at the case where a is 0 so let's make the circle to what we're looking looking at and then I guess we can cross out this one for now so we can make our circles here so this one and that one and let's write out our expression so for the first circle this one we see that we can write it like this x naught b okay and then for the second circle for this circle here we can write it like this this is going to be x y not because of this zero right there and b not because of this zero right here okay so we have the j equation now so now we, we go to the ka equation So we're going to look at the case when a is equal to 1. So that's going to be the bottom side here. We're going to ignore this one temporarily. And then we make our circles here. And remember, so when we're looking at the k, we're going to be circling the empty space. So we make a circle here. And we make a circle here. So we begin with this circle. We see that x is going to be 1, so that's just x times b naught. And then we add it to the other circle. The other circle is expressed like this x not y not b right because we have a 0 in the x a 0 in the y and then a 1 for the b and that's where this x not y not and b comes from and by the way so I'm assuming that you know how to do k maps and you're familiar with them but I'm going to show you how you would solve this k-map here when you're writing jk equations for it so let's start here ja we look at the case where a is equal to zero so we're going to be looking at this one and this one well i should make these sort of circles more squared because i'm not making circles i'm focusing my attention only and then we ignore these temporarily so in black I'm, I'm going to make my circles so I can make my circles like this like that so that's one circle that's two circles and then I circle the corners Okay, so what does that give me for JA? So I can begin by writing it like this. Let's begin first with the with this circle here. So that's going to be simply x naught because if you look here.
we're doing this one and this one only so that's x naught okay and in the next one it's going to be this one the corners so that's going to be why not so we and we have to add it because it's a separate circle plus why not and then if we look at the bottom circle that I have here that is simply oh and this has to be B here so when we add it here we see that for this bottom circle A is 1 so that's just going to be A okay let's get rid of these markings So now let's look at KB. So we focus our attention on the case when B is equal to 1. Right there. We ignore the rest. So we make our circles now. And we're going to circle the empty space, of course. So we circle this one, and which one is that? That is going to be x. So we say x. Which other circle do we do? We can circle the outer one, this one, and this one. That gives us why not and then we have one more circle this one here the top one and that is plus a naught so that is our JK equations so you'll notice that unlike the previous um, designs that we did, the J's and the K's are not equal here. They're different. So this is, this is an example of when they're different, of course. And now we're going to move on to implementation in Multisim. Okay, so here we are in Multisim. I went ahead and... Uh, set up the circuit ahead of time and I placed the logic gates in convenient location but as with all of my designs I haven't wired up the logic yet the only things I wired is the clock uh, the power and the output of each of each individual flip-flop so as you know this is only a 2-bit counter but it has quite a lot of functionality so we see here that we have a couple AND gates, one OR gate here, and uh, uh, two, three input AND gates. So that'll accommodate for these equations in a bit. Then I'm going to show you how to do it. We also have our two inputs, and this time around I did label them because we need to be able to keep track of um, which input we're looking at at any given moment. And of course I have my output here hooked up to the decoder and the LED bar. So, and down here I have the uh, additional three input and uh, OR gates, rather. So let's begin wiring them up. Okay, so this is these are the equations I wrote out. We're going to begin wiring the K of the A flip-flop. So let's... K of the A. Actually, I think it's the best idea if we start with the J of the A, so right here. So we're going to start with the J of the A. So this is going to be the output of the J here that, go, that goes towards the J. So we're going to hook it up here. Okay, let's look at some of the requirements. 
we see that we need x naught and b into this one so x naught is going to come from here right because the first switch is x the second switch is y so and we're looking at x naught so that's the inverted version of it and then it's being added it's going to it's being multiplied together with b so b is the output of the second flip flop so we're looking at that output right there okay and then we're looking at the other side which is x times y naught times b naught so let's start with the easy one with x you grab it from right here right because that's where the switch is located we need to multiply it by y naught this time so what we do is we go here y naught is going to be that one and then last but not least is b naught so b naught actually comes out of this one here right because this is the b flip flop and we're looking at the b naught of that and so it's added together with the other AND gate that we did so that's hooked up here and that goes into the J of the first flip-flop into the JA so let's continue to the KA now so we see that for the AND gate of the the two input AND gate of the KA we have X times B naught so let's go up here so X let's grab it from right here and then we need to grab it B naught so B naught in fact we can grab it from this wire here so let's go ahead and hook that up like that okay so now we move on to the three input AND gate on this right hand side here it's asking for Y naught and X naught and B so let's see what we start with we start with Y naught hook it up here because this is the Y switch and then this is the inverter for the Y so that's Y naught and then we need X X simply comes from this wire here so but first I can grab a B I can grab B from here so I'm grabbing B from this wire here so now all that's missing is X naught X naught is this wire so let's just grab it from right here like that and these two are added together of course and this goes into the K of our A flip-flop so I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down here right there alright so now we move on to the B flip-flop this one so we're gonna start with the KB so we need for this flip-flop we're gonna this is a three input OR gate and we're gonna need X Y naught and A naught so let's start with A naught A naught is gonna come out of this flip-flop for on the pin 15 we have a and on the pin 14 we have a naught so let's just 
bring it somewhere like here so that's a nut and then we need heck uh, we need why not now why not I can grab it from here this wire so let's go ahead and do it like that so let's mark it so that we know which one we need right there so that's why not because that comes out of this one and then we need X and the X will come from this wire in fact so we just have to we'll go up and skip over a couple wires here and put it to the second one like that and that way we grab we take an X okay and then the second OR gate that we have to wire up it's telling us it needs X not Y not and A so let's look for those so right away I can grab A from this first wire up here and put some space in between these two so that we distinguish which is which so that's A and I need X naught and Y naught so X naught I can grab it from the first wire here no I have to grab it from wire number 9 that's where I grab X naught so let's just double check so they're both not okay so let's go up here I'll put it here and then why not I can grab it from this wire here right there okay so the first one that we did was for the K so that goes into the K here and then the second one that we did will go into the J right there just like that and this should complete the circuit so right now both switches are in the zero zero position so what we should expect to see is counting up from zero to three and cycle over so let's see if that's what we get okay it does that if I press if I toggle the X switch I should see counting down so from 3 to 0 and so on and so forth okay that's good so now if I toggle this Y switch since we're counting down we should stop at 0 so let's see what we get stops at zero let's restart it just to make sure that we're good zero okay it stops at zero so if I toggle now my X switch in this position it should count up and stop at three so let's see if that works and there it is all four conditions are working and I can just play with these switches how I want and this is what the circuit looks like so yeah that uh, wraps things up thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.